This is a revision video about the GCSE chemistry or combined science topic of cracking. This comes up in unit 7, the organic chemistry unit within AQA GCSE chemistry or combined science. By the end of this video you should be able to explain why cracking is important to the petrochemical industry, recognise and give examples of the first four alkenes, describe a chemical test used to show that an alkene is present, complete symbol equations for cracking reactions, and describe the process of cracking, including two sets of reaction conditions. Before unrefined crude oil can be used as a fuel or a chemical feedstock, the mixture is separated out into fractions, and we covered this process within the fractional distillation video in this series. Fractions are groups of molecules of similar sizes and with similar chemical properties. This graph shows the approximate percentages of different fractions present in crude oil, and also the approximate percentages of those fractions that we actually need. As you can see, there is greater demand for petrol and diesel than what can be supplied from crude oil alone, while larger fractions, like heavy fuel oil, are more available than necessary, so we have a surplus. Cracking is a process that allows this surplus of fuel oil and other large fractions to be converted into smaller, more useful molecules. Cracking is the process used to break down hydrocarbons to produce smaller, more useful and more in-demand molecules. It's an example of thermal decomposition. Decomposition means breaking something down, and thermal decomposition is breaking it down using heat. Conservation of matter means that the number and type of atoms cannot change during a chemical reaction. When we break apart a large alkane like this decane molecule, if we make a smaller alkane like this octane molecule, we can count up the number of carbon and hydrogen atoms that have gone into that and whatever's left over, we can use to make a second product. If you look closely, you'll see that we have two carbon atoms left over, but we don't have enough hydrogen atoms left to make a second alkane containing two carbons. You should know the general formula for working out the molecular formula of an alkane is CnH2n plus two. We met this in the first video in this series. According to this, to make an alkane with two carbons, we would require six hydrogen atoms, but we only have four remaining, and therefore we cannot make another alkane. Instead, the products of cracking are one alkane and one or more alkenes. Alkenes are another example of a homologous series, a group of compounds that undergo similar chemical reactions because they have a shared functional group and a shared general formula. You've already met the alkanes, and you hopefully know that these are hydrocarbons that only contain single bonds. Another way of describing this is to say that they are saturated. This means that every carbon atom is bonded to as many different atoms as possible. Alkenes are not saturated. We say that they are unsaturated because not every carbon is bonded to as many different atoms as possible. In GCSE chemistry, we only encounter unsaturated molecules that have a single double bond, although you should be aware that there are other molecules containing multiple double bonds or even triple bonds. We just won't be meeting them within GCSE chemistry. Let's make sure that that made sense and you're now happy identifying alkenes. For each of these four molecules, ask yourself, is it a hydrocarbon? Is it unsaturated? And if it is both of these things, is it an alkene? Pause the video and write down some answers now. The first molecule in the top left is not a hydrocarbon because it contains an atom of bromine and we know that hydrocarbons are compounds only containing atoms of carbon and hydrogen. So since it's not a hydrocarbon, it can't be an alkene. The second molecule in the top right is a hydrocarbon because it only contains carbon and hydrogen atoms. However, each one of those carbon atoms is making bonds to the maximum number of other atoms. So this molecule is not unsaturated and therefore it can't be an alkene either. The third molecule in the bottom left is a hydrocarbon and it is unsaturated. However, alkenes only contain double bonds and this molecule contains a triple covalent bond, so it's not an alkene either. Our fourth and final molecule is a hydrocarbon, it is unsaturated and it is an alkene. This is the alkene called ethene. If you're already confident drawing alkanes, then drawing alkenes is quite straightforward. We start off in the same way with a carbon-carbon chain. Then we're going to draw a double covalent bond between two of these carbon atoms. 
When you're drawing larger alkenes, it's important that you understand that the double bond is only between two of the carbon atoms, not the whole way along the chain. Then we need to fill in the hydrogens. Remember, each carbon atom can make four bonds in total. Here, both of our carbon atoms have already made two bonds, so they can make two more, and so we need to add two hydrogen atoms. This is the first alkene, called ethene. As you know, the alkane with two carbon atoms in is called ethane, so you can think of eth as meaning two carbons, and therefore this alkene is called ethene. Methene doesn't exist, because it wouldn't be possible for one carbon atom on its own to make a double bond. Just like with alkanes, you need to be able to draw and name the first four alkenes. The only difference here is that rather than having carbon chains of between one and four carbons, as with alkanes, for the alkenes, the carbon chain will be from two to five carbons. It's important that you remember that each one of these molecules will only contain one double bond. We've already met ethene, and so our second alkene will be propene. As you can see, there's one carbon-carbon double bond, and then the additional carbon only has a single bond adding it into the chain. It's not important for GCSE chemistry where you draw the double bond, as long as it's between two carbon atoms in the chain. Our third alkene is called butene, and again you can see there's one carbon-carbon double bond, and then the other carbons are single bonded in, and every carbon atom is making four bonds in total. The fourth alkene contains five carbon atoms, and we haven't met the name for this yet because we didn't need it for alkanes. But this is the point where naming alkanes and alkenes and other molecules gets really straightforward, because we start using the same prefixes that we use for shapes. So a five-sided shape is called a pentagon, and an alkene with five carbon atoms in is called pentene. Alkenes are more reactive molecules than alkanes. We can differentiate between the two type of molecules using a test called the bromine water test. Bromine water is able to identify the presence of double bonds, so since this is the only difference between an alkene and an alkane, it allows us to work out which is which. Before it reacts with any other chemicals, bromine water is a transparent orange liquid. If you mix it with an alkane, no chemical reaction happens, and so it stays orange. If you mix bromine water with an unsaturated molecule, such as an alkene, then it turns colourless. The reason for this is that the orange colour comes from the bromine molecule, and specifically that bromine-bromine bond. This bond absorbs blue light, so if you take some white light and you take out the blue light, the light that's transmitted is orange. After that bromine molecule attacks the carbon-carbon double bond, we have a new molecule formed and there no longer is any bromine-bromine bond. So there's nothing to absorb the blue light and nothing to make the light being transmitted look orange. It's absolutely vital that in describing this, you say that the bromine water has gone colourless. You will not get the mark for saying that it's gone clear. Clear implies you can see through it, and I can already see through the transparent orange bromine water. You need to describe it as turning colourless. Let's make sure that you can now describe how the results of this test could be used to differentiate between an alkene and an alkane. Pause the video and write down your answers. In this test, it's the alkene that's going to make the bromine water change, and it changes from orange to colourless. This is because the bromine has been added to the double bond, and once it's bonded, it loses its colour. We've described already how in cracking, a large alkane is broken down to make a smaller alkane and also an alkene. You may be given symbol equations for these reactions and asked to balance them, but this is less challenging than it sounds. There are two types of question that you may encounter. In the first one, we're given one of the products and asked to work out what the second product would be. This is simply a matter of adding up the carbons and hydrogens on both sides of the symbol equation. In my first example, my reactant is C25H52, and that means that in my products, I must still have 25 carbon atoms and 52 hydrogen atoms. So if I take away the 10 carbon and 22 hydrogen that are in decane, this tells me that my second product must contain 15 carbons and 30 hydrogens. In my second style of question, I'm given both products, but I need to work out how many ethene molecules there are. Again, both sides of my equation have to add up to be the same number. 
So in order to get 25 carbon atoms in total, if I have nine of them in my first product, which is called nonane, that means 16 of them must be in my second product. So if each molecule only contains two carbon atoms, in total, I must have eight of them. Pause the video now and make sure that you understand by completing each of these simple equations. Hopefully you've managed to correctly identify that the product of the first reaction is C22H44, for the second reaction it's C17H36, for the third reaction it's C13H26, and then the reactants for questions 4 and 5 are C30H62 and C13H28. Finally, you need to be able to describe the reaction conditions for two different types of cracking. We'll start with catalytic cracking, which you may have completed at school. Remember, a catalyst is a chemical which speeds up the rate of reaction without being used up itself. Firstly, we need a source of a large alkane. In school, we tend to use a piece of mineral wool soaked in paraffin. To crack the paraffin, it must be passed over a catalyst, and we tend to use a type of catalyst called a zeolite or an alumina silicate. Cracking is a type of thermal decomposition, so we need a heat source, usually a Bunsen burner. This is used to vaporise the paraffin, and then those vapours are passed over the hot catalyst, which will break down the large alkane into a smaller alkane and one or more alkenes. These vapours can then be collected over water into test tubes, and the test tubes can be tested with bromine water to identify which are alkanes and which are alkenes. The second type of cracking you need to know about is steam cracking. This also requires a very high temperature but it uses steam in place of a catalyst. You'll notice that neither one of these methods makes any mention of high pressure. In GCSE chemistry, we don't talk about the role of pressure in cracking at all, and you won't get credit if you mention it in the exam. Here's a final opportunity to check your understanding. Pause the video and write in the words that should fill in the gaps in these sentences. In catalytic cracking, a catalyst is used to break down a large alkane. A catalyst is a chemical that speeds up the rate of reaction without being used up. Cracking takes place at high temperature, so the mineral wool soaked in paraffin must be heated until the paraffin vaporises, and the catalyst must also be heated until it's extremely hot. The product gases can be tested with bromine water to see whether they're alkanes or alkenes. This orange coloured liquid will turn colourless in the presence of double bonds. Steam cracking does not use a catalyst, but instead uses high temperature and steam. Thank you very much for watching and if you found this a useful video don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCSE chemistry videos coming soon. Remember if you're taking triple science you do need to know some additional information about alkenes and their reactions so watch out for that video. If you'd like me to cover a particular topic let me know in the comments below.